Modifying a 5-inch gauge Great Western Railway 14XX steam locomotive, part 2, commencing disassembly. And I can't wait to get rid of these copper pipes. Please note this is not a King Scale or Silvercrest model locomotive. This engine was bought directly from the manufacturer in China. I've received one or two strange comments, and this is nothing new, but just to clarify, the engine was bought from the manufacturer in China by me. It is my engine, it belongs to me, it does not belong to a customer. To continue with the disassembly process, what I'm doing at the moment is removing this small plug. This is the drain valve for the displacement lubricator. And the displacement lubricator on this engine is huge. It sits on one of the running boards just inside the outer cover of the main tank. You'll see it very shortly when I remove the superstructure. This plug has a very long thread on it. That's because it's not really a plug, it's a valve. And once I remove it, you can see the water running out of the displacement lubricator. And that's a good sign. It shows that the displacement lubricator is displacing. As far as I can see, this superstructure, the cab and the side tanks, and part of the firebox wrapper, is held to the running boards using about a dozen small stainless steel bolts. So it's a simple job to unscrew these, because the stainless steel and they're going into brass, there isn't a rust problem. I'm using a pair of forceps on this one because it's been difficult. It unscrewed okay, it just fell down onto the side of the frame, and I can't leave it there. Before attempting to remove the superstructure, I'm going to remove the safety valve. I want to have a look at it anyway, and see what the thread's like, because I will need to make some plugs for this engine so that I can hydraulically test the boiler to get a valid UK test certificate. There is a test certificate that came with it from the manufacturer, which is perfectly fine, but I'm going to do it right and I'm going to obtain a Northern Federation test certificate. So should I ever feel the need to run this locomotive on a miniature railway track, I can do so. This really is a very long thread, and please note, the edges of the safety valve are rounded, and that's to allow the safety valve cover to slide over it. It has not, and I repeat, it has not been rounded by the use of my Barco adjustable spanner, because Barco adjustable spanners do not round the edges of nuts or steam fittings, or safety valves. Or bolts. I'm being fairly careful here not to scratch the paintwork because the paintwork's quite nice and I can really do without repainting the engine. Up to now this sequence has been running in real time but I had to shorten it so this is the edited version and now the safety valve comes out of the hole and as you can see the thread is quite long. I don't know what kind of thread sealant's been used at the factory it's very different to the stuff I use it's certainly not Loctite. I'm looking forward to this next bit. I'm getting rid of the whistle valve. This whistle valve is horrible. The design's good, it doesn't leak, it blows the whistle. But to me it's in the wrong place and it looks totally wrong. So now, without the aid of a safety net, I'm very carefully lifting off the superstructure. Hopefully without marking the paint. Like an idiot, I completely forgot about the piece of silicone rubber piping. But once I lifted the superstructure clear of the engine, it was very easy to unhook it which allowed me to move the superstructure into a part of the workshop where it can sit by itself without fear of being damaged. I think I mentioned in the first episode of this series that the point of rebuilding this engine was not to have a go at the manufacturer and not to have a go at products made in China generally, but unfortunately, just as I expected, the keyboard warriors who have got nothing better to do have been out having a go at Chinese products in general and saying, oh, well, you get what you pay for and it's this, that and the other. Well, maybe it is, but what I'm looking at here is a very nicely made piece of equipment. So any more comments having a go at the Chinese, unless they're very, very interesting, will be deleted immediately, not allowed on the channel, and instead will probably sit in the crappy keyboard warrior's comment bin somewhere in cyberspace. My initial thoughts on this locomotive are very positive. The design is very clever, the way the superstructure lifts off and the tanks are separate units inside, and the boiler is really nicely made. Just look at it. Look how many stays it has. Properly silver soldered and even masked off somehow. Yes, the boiler's lovely. On the other hand, some of the parts are not so lovely. The steam turret is horrible. In this clip, by the way, I'm refitting a quarter by 40 nut with a stainless steel ball inside to seal this opening so I can continue to run the engine on compressed air. What I'm doing at the moment is taking the piping off the engine entirely. 
starting by removing the union nut which holds the piping that I made to make the injector work. The residue you can see is some Loctite 542 that I used just to make sure nothing leaked because the original plan was to send this complete engine back to China after I fitted the injector, but instead I bought it. Both of the side tanks have been removed and the engine is now on its side, so I can give it a run and watch what happens underneath. Yes, that looks okay, it's running quite well, everything's very free. So never mind the crank axle, what about the buffers? These have been bothering me ever since I saw the engine. The springs are far too weak, and all that retains the buffer is a bent piece of brass wire. I can't live with this at all. So I removed the piece of brass wire, and then the buffer complete with the spring. The shaft was a bit loose in the end of the buffer, so I applied some retaining compound and refitted it. The buffers are beginning to rust. I can live with the tool marks because the answer to that is have you seen the full size? But I didn't really want it to look rusty so I cleaned it up on the polishing spindle and then thoroughly oiled it before wandering off to look for my box of split pins. Once I selected the correct diameter split pins all I had to do then was simply fit the spring to the buffer, put the buffer in the buffer stock and push the split pin through the end. Originally I put a washer in but it's too tight in there, there's no room for a washer. But the split pin will suffice, at least it's better than a roughly cut off piece of brass wire. I opened the end of the split pin and that was that one done. So now it's time to remove the piece of brass wire from the lower buffer. I say lower because the engine is on its side. It's really the left hand buffer. So with the original buffer and feeble spring removed, with the help of a video edit, the job's done. The next thing I want to do is just get rid of all this piping. And for the benefit of one viewer who wrote in, this is not steel pipe, nor is it double walled. It's thick walled, copper tubing, 3 16ths of an inch in diameter, and it's a type that you would use in a car for the hydraulic system for the brakes. This is worth a mention, once you remove the injector, always put a union nut on the end of the injector because the cones are removable, and if they fall out and you lose them, the injector won't work anymore. When I recited the injector underneath the engine nearer the back so you could see the overflow, I had to relocate the whistle, and to do this I made a simple bracket just to change its position. If you look at this part that's fastened to the buffer beam, right in the centre of the picture more or less, you can see that it's broken. This is part of the dummy vacuum gear, and although it looks good, it's in a really bad position, because when anybody picks up the engine, that's where the hand generally goes. I'll show how I repaired this in the next episode. I'm going to stop talking for a while and just run the engine and let you listen to it and watch it. But before I do, I'd just like to say that the large cylindrical object in the centre of the engine on the running board, that's a displacement lubricator. And that's going to lubricate the engine, I think, for quite a long while. And it works very well indeed. So that is it from me for now. Until the next episode, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.